Welcome back. In this segment, we're going to cover the Tone Curve tab and this Basic tab. So let's go straight to the Tone Curve. For these two tabs, you want to be in the view uh, where you can see everything as opposed to the detail. You can do that by Control-0 or Command-0 on a Mac, Control-Alt-0 or Command-Option-0 on a Mac. Since CS3 came out, there's actually been they introduced another tab here so when you're first looking at it you're under this parametric view and it looks like you've got a you know you got a 45 degree line however under the point we do have some contrast set in here now the problem with the way camera raw works is that if you put more contrast in it will re result in more clipping here in the histogram so we're going to set this to linear and you can see immediately this caused a little less clipping. This causes all your values in the histogram to push toward the center. And there's plenty of ways you can increase contrast once you're in Photoshop. So we're going to defer that until we get into Photoshop. So just under point, leave it set to linear. Now let's go to the basic tab. You can see these default settings here. Up here it should say as shot and you'll notice the blacks is set to 5. What I'm going to do is set all these to 0 so that from here down everything says 0. And we want this to be our new starting point whenever we open up a file. We're going to make modifications to this but at least when I open up the next file the detail, all that this will be set to 0, this will be set to 1, over here this will be set to linear and all these values will be zeroed out and it'll be Adobe RGB 16-bit and to do that just go up here to this little flyout menu click here and scroll down and toward the bottom it says save new camera raw defaults it's off the screen here on my screen capture but it's this one next to the bottom save new camera raw defaults so that's all you'll have to mess with that next time you open up an image it should should appear as close as it came right out of the camera. So now let's try to reduce uh, further clipping. We'll go into the exposure when you see a little bit of clipping here and you can move that slider and under the blacks this controls the dark. Now you can clip, you can select these little things up at the top so that the clipping shows for the highlights is red and for the blacks is blue. However, but by the time you actually see some red or black here, it's already too late. You've got too much clipping. So I'd recommend just turn these off. You can get a little more precise feedback if you hold the Alt key or Option on a Mac and it'll show you exactly where the clipping is occurring and actually what channels are clipping first. Same with the blacks. Now the ideal scenario, you can avoid all this, is if you aim for what I like to call a little bald spot here on the histogram. See we got where we don't even see any pixels at all. Same on the exposure if I bring this down a little bit. Now I've managed to achieve that here. This is not always a luxury you've got. It's usually a fight to, to uh, prevent any sort of clipping. Now there's one other little trick you can do. On the temperature, see where it's opened up a little bit? If you Sometimes if you move this the, it, this will retreat a certain amount as all the channels come into alignment and you keep moving it eventually they'll advance again now I don't I can kinda of split the difference I don't need to warm up the image that much however right right about here I've still by keeping it a little warmer I've got quite a bit of open area here so you can move uh, the temperature and tint slightly is a way to open up some space. You'll find the tint doesn't have as much bearing on it. If it visually starts looking too green or too magenta, you want to correct it because it's going to be much harder to get the colors back into alignment in Photoshop. So this is good. The point I want to make here is that the temperature and tint don't have to look exactly like you want. We'll be able to bring it back in Photoshop. What we're doing here is just using it as a means to minimize clipping whenever possible. 
that's why I like to always refer to this to my students is that we're pre-digesting the file so to speak so that when we bring it into Photoshop we'll, that's where we'll be able to do the magic so you've got to defer the gratification so to speak and just be patient now I still have a good amount of space here so I don't I can bump up the exposure slightly but you can leave a safe amount of bald space here if possible especially with portraits and dealing with skin tones you really want to avoid clipping here because it it makes it very hard to get good good color on skin tones here with these dogs it's not as much of an issue anyway looks like we've got a good histogram and this is what I mean by pre-digesting the file we're gonna take this right into Photoshop now so to do that you just click open image and should have all the information we need and it opens up in the coming segments we'll go through the complete workflow of how to develop this image in Photoshop